Hi there, and welcome to this video on A-level chemistry for the AQA specification, focusing on the topic of bonding, and in particular, on the shapes of molecules and ions. Hi, I'm Manisha from StudyMind, where we help you to revise A-level chemistry with our helpful revision resources tailored to your subject, your specification, and to you. If you're new here, please make sure to click that subscribe button, and whilst you're watching, please leave any comments down below about anything you're unsure of. If it's your first time watching, make sure to let us know so we can send you our free revision resources. We also have helpful timestamps to guide you through the video. So, let's get started. Welcome to lesson five of seven in this tutorial, covering the shapes of simple molecules and ions. This is our fifth video in our series of seven lessons on the topic of bonding. In the last lesson, we looked at the different types of crystal structures and energy changes associated with changes of state. Here are the key learning objectives for this lesson. First, we will look at electron pairs, and then we will cover VSPR theory. Here are the AQA specification points for this tutorial. Feel free to pause the video now and read through them before we begin. First, we will look at bonding pairs and lone pairs. The central atom is the atom that every other atom is bonded to. This will form covalent bonds with all the other atoms involved in the molecule. Here, the central atom has been shown in pink. The shape of the molecule is determined by the number of electron pairs in the outermost shell around the central atom. Here, we can see the four electron pairs of nitrogen in ammonia, NH3. We have highlighted the lone pairs of electrons in nitrogen. These are shown in pink. Similarly, we can now see the three bonding pairs of electrons of nitrogen, shown in pink again. The lone pair is defined as the pair of electrons that is not shared with another atom in a bond. The bonding pair is the pair of electrons that is shared between two atoms in a bond. Our next specification point is to look at the various types of repulsion. Electron charge clouds are regions where there is a high chance of an electron pair being present. This is a region of negative charge around the nucleus and it is linked to an atomic orbital. An electron charge cloud can either contain lone pairs or bonding pairs of electrons. Any electron pair in the outermost shell of an atom can exist as an electron charge cloud. It doesn't matter whether the electron pair is involved in a bond or not. They're as far apart as possible in order to minimise the repulsion between their regions of negative charge. This means that the repelling effect of lone pairs is a lot stronger than that of bonding pairs. As a consequence, lone pairs are held a lot closer to the central atom than bonding pairs, as we can see here in this diagram. You need to learn the following types of repulsion as well as their strengths. Bond pair bond pair repulsion is the weakest and lone pair lone pair repulsion is the greatest. Now we will look at the effect of this electron pair repulsion on bond angles. As lone pairs of electrons have the strongest repelling effect, there is the greatest bond angle between them. The larger the bond angle between the two pairs of electrons, the further apart they will be. This means that there is a greater repulsion between them. VSPR stands for Valence Shell Electron Pair Repulsion Theory. Here, 
we will look at the repulsion of different types of electron pairs, how it influences the bond angle, and the different shapes that will be produced. Lone pair lone pair has the biggest repulsion in angles, followed by lone pair bonding pair with the second biggest repulsion. Bond pair bond pair has the smallest repulsion in angles. Here, we can see that methane has no lone pairs. The bond angle here is going to be 109.5 degrees. Now, we'll see ammonia, which has one lone pair. This means that the bond angle will be 107 degrees. Finally, we'll look at water, which has two lone pairs. Its bond angle is going to be 104.5 degrees. We can predict the shape of a molecule by considering how many lone pairs of electrons and how many bonding pairs of electrons are present. Here are some steps to predict the shape of a molecule. Firstly, we must identify the central atom. Then, we will count the number of outer shell electrons. In order to do this, we should first write down the total number of electrons in the outermost shell of the central atom. This will be the same as the group number electron the element is found in. Next, you must add one electron for each bond that the central atom makes with other atoms. In step four, we will add or subtract electrons if ion charges are present. If a negative ion charge is present, you should add an electron, but if a positive charge is present, you should subtract an electron. Now, divide the total of these electrons by two to find out how many electron pairs there will be, since two is the number of electrons in a pair. Now, we can find out how many of these pairs are lone pairs and how many are bonding pairs. Finally, we can use this number to predict the shape. You should ignore bonds with oxygen as this forms double bonds. If oxygen is present, do not add or subtract electrons for it. Let's move on to our final specification point, covering the shapes of, and the bond angles in, simple molecules and ions. Let's now go through each type of shape possible. You should remember these shapes and relevant bond angles for your exams. If there are two electron pairs around the central atom, such as in beryllium chloride, we will get something called a linear shape. Beryllium is in group two, but the electronegativity difference between beryllium and chlorine is not great enough for ions to be formed, so a covalent compound is formed instead. Beryllium has two outer electrons and is forming two covalent bonds. This means it has no lone pairs and two bonding pairs. The bond angle is 180 degrees. If there are four electron pairs around the central atom, such as in CO2, we will get a linear shape as well. Carbon has four outer electrons and is forming two double bonds, so it has no lone pairs and four bonding pairs. What if there were three electron pairs around the central atom? such as in BF3. This shape is called trigonal planar. BF3 has the same shape as BCl3. Boron has three outer electrons and is forming three covalent bonds. This means it has no lone pairs and three bonding pairs. The bond angle is 120 degrees. Now, let's look at another compound with three electron pairs around the central atom, such as SO2. Sulfur has six outer electrons and is forming two double bonds. This means it has one lone pair and two bonding pairs. There are two double bonds and one lone pair, which will try to get as far apart as possible, 
taking up this trigonal planar arrangement. Because the lone pair isn't counted when you describe the shape, this SO2 is described as non-linear. The double bonds are slightly stronger than single bonds, so this cancels out the stronger nature of lone pairs. Now let's look at a compound with four electron pairs around the central atom, such as methane. This shape is tetrahedral and is one of the more common ones in chemistry. Carbon has four outer electrons and is forming four covalent bonds. So it has no lone pairs and four bonding pairs, as shown here. This bond angle is a really important one for you to remember, 109.5 degrees. Now let's look at another example with four electron pairs, ammonia. Nitrogen has five outer electrons and is forming three covalent bonds. This means it has one lone pair and three bonding pairs. The electron pairs will arrange themselves in a tetrahedral fashion, as we saw in methane. But the lone pair is not counted when you describe the shape, so the shape is pyramidal. However, remember that there is more repulsion between a lone pair and a bonding pair than there is between two bonding pairs. This forces the bonding pairs closer together, reducing the angle from 109.5 degrees to 107. Now let's look at water. Oxygen has six outer electrons and is forming two covalent bonds. So it has two lone pairs and two bonding pairs. Yet again, there are four electron pairs around the central atom. So the arrangement is in a tetrahedral shape. However, there are two lone pairs. So the angle between the bonding pairs is reduced from 109.5 degrees to 104 degrees. Also, remember that the lone pairs are not considered when you name the shape. Now let's look at phosphorus fluoride. PF5 has the same shape as PCL5. Phosphorus has five outer electrons and is forming five covalent bonds. So it has no lone pairs and five bonding pairs, as we can see here. This shape is known as trigonal bipyramidal. The bond angles are 90 degrees and 120 degrees respectively. Our next compound is sulfur fluoride. Sulfur has six outer electrons and is forming four covalent bonds. So it has one lone pair and four bonding pairs. This shape is called a seesaw and the bond angles are 87 degrees and 102 degrees. In reality, obviously the electrons are much closer to the central atom for reasons we described earlier in this tutorial. Now we'll look at chlorine fluoride. Chlorine has seven outer electrons and is forming three covalent bonds. So it has two lone pairs and three bonding pairs. The electrons will repel strongly, forcing the bond pairs CF and CLF closer together. This type of shape is called T-shaped. The bond angle is 88 degrees. This is due to the repulsion from the lone pairs. We'll now look at another sulfur compound, sulfur hexafluoride. Sulfur has six outer electrons and so forms six covalent bonds. So it has no lone pairs and six bonding pairs. The angles are 90 degrees in the plane and 90 degrees above and below the plane. This shape is known as octahedral. Our next compound is xenon tetrafluoride. Xenon has eight outer electrons and is forming four covalent bonds. So it has two lone pairs and four bonding pairs. 
This shape is called square planar, and like the angles in a square, the angle is 90 degrees in the plane. Let's quickly recap what we've just learnt. When there are two electron pairs, the shape will be linear. When there are three, the shape will be trigonal planar. When there are four, the shapes will be tetrahedral, trigonal planar, or nonlinear. Now let's look at five electron pairs. The shapes here will be trigonal bipyramidal, seesaw, or T shaped. With six electron pairs, the shapes will either be octahedral or square planar. These slides were a useful summary recap of all the shapes you'll need to know for your AQA exams. So pause the video now and go through them again slowly. Let's try this practice question together. What is the shape of the molecule NH3? First, we need to know the central atom, which in this case will be nitrogen. Now, we need to find the number of outer shell electrons of nitrogen. Nitrogen is in group 5 of the periodic table, therefore it will have 5 electrons in its outermost shell. We can then add one electron for each bond made with other atoms. We know it's bonded to three other atoms, so we can do five plus three to give us eight. Now we can add or subtract electrons depending on the charge. Here, there are no ion charges involved. Next, we will divide the total number of electrons by 2. So we'll do 8 divided by 2 to give us 4. Now we need to know how many of these are lone pairs and how many are bonding pairs. There are three bonds formed with hydrogen, making three bonding pairs and one lone pair. Now we can predict the shape. We know that this would be a trigonal planar shape with a bond angle of 107 degrees, as shown here. Every lone pair of electrons reduces the original bond angle of the shape by 2.5 degrees. So for example, if a molecule has a tetrahedral shape, such as methane, and no lone pairs, the bond angle is 109.5 degrees. However, if there is one lone pair present, as shown in ammonia, the angle is reduced to 107 degrees. We've now covered all the learning objectives for this lesson. Feel free to skip back through the video and re-watch anything you are unsure about. Before we finish, make a note of these two very important slides one last time. We've now completed lesson five. If you liked this video, make sure to catch our latest videos by subscribing down below and leaving a comment on a topic that you'd like to see a video on. Click here to watch more videos on our series of A-level chemistry or visit our website, studymind.co.uk for past paper compilations by topic and specification.